Hi, my name is Chisita, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator at the American Society for Microbiology. And I'm Janet Rowe, I'm the Communications Fellow. Welcome to Social Media 101. Many of you may already be on social media, but in case you're not, here's a quick list of some of the most popular social media tools. Why should you join social media? Well, you're already doing it. Many of the conversations that you want to have are already happening, so join them online. You can build your personal brand and become a reputable source for your science. Cut out the middleman and speak directly to your audience. Did you know that 4.75 billion items are shared each day on Facebook? Increase the impact of your research. As a benefit to our members, ASM has partnered with the online software Kudos. Kudos lets you find your research papers and further explain them by adding links and talking more about your research details. You can share those papers using Facebook and Twitter, and then you can measure the impact of your research and see how many retweets and shares you've gotten. There are already over 50,000 researchers on the KUDOS platform. Hopefully by now you're excited about communicating your science online. We want to think about our goals. There are three main goals you may have when communicating your science online. Digital curation. There's so many cool things out there and you want to gather them and put them all in one place. Community. You want to find the people who are interested in the science that you're interested in. And creation. You don't see the science that you're interested in out there and you want to put new content online. You also want to think about how much time you have. Take a look at the slide. Some social media tools take minimal time, like Facebook or Google+, whereas others, like blogging, could be life-sucking yet strangely satisfying. Are you ready for the first activity? What are your social media goals? I do a lot of acting in my spare time, so my social media goals are usually related to community. I'm looking for other directors, other actors, and casting calls. I really want to keep my ear to the ground on the theater scene. You might be looking for other researchers and other scientists to collaborate with, and also you want to stay abreast of your field. So let's take a few minutes now to list out our social media goals. Now's a good time to pause this video. Now that we've got our goals in line, let's take a look at some of the common fears of communicating your science online. Being wrong. It's okay to be wrong, just be honest about it. Be completely transparent anytime you make a mistake and people will appreciate it. Being ignored. The more you engage online, the more of an audience you develop, so the less likely you are to be ignored. Also, you might be afraid about being misunderstood. When communicating science, we're using a lot of technical terms and scientific wording. Janet is going to talk to you about dropping the jargon and help you get ready to communicate your science to the public. So naturally, when you approach your audience, you want to be understood. And in order to communicate with any audience, you need to speak their language. Now, unless you're only speaking with other microbiologists in your field, this means dropping the jargon. Microbiology uses different terms and phrases across all the different subfields, and this certainly holds true across science in general. So it's not simply thinking about the general public that we want to keep this in mind. Now, dropping the jargon is not the same thing as dumbing things down. It's translating the language of your microbiology into the language commonly shared between you and your audience. This is how you're going to reach other microbiologists outside your field, other scientists, the heterogeneous public at large, and members of all these groups who are not native speakers of that common tongue. So here's a trick for thinking about your audience's perspective. Think about your worst subject in school, the one that gave you the hardest time. For me, it's physics. So for example, this quantum physics title, I couldn't tell you what this article is about in any meaningful way. And thinking about your audience, this title on Clostridium difficile reads to them like our quantum physics title reads to most of us. So to get some practice translating our microbiology, we're going to work through activity two together. Take a moment to read through this title and see if you can pick out what words would be jargon. So these are the words that we picked out as jargon in our title. Now I'm going to go to the end and start with Clostridium difficile. 
How can we translate this? Or rather, can we? Sometimes in microbiology, we use terms that there's really no good alternative for. So in this case, we need to provide some context for our audience. Here, we can point out that Clostridium difficile is a pathogen or disease-causing organism. Now let's go back to the beginning and look at high throughput. How can we translate this? High throughput means that we're working with large amounts of data, which in turn is a way to improve the rigor of our analyses. So here's a possible translation. Moving on, let's look at gene essentiality. Basically what we're talking about here is whether or not a gene is essential. So this is how we can translate gene essentiality. Of course, now we're going to have to toy with the wording of our title to make sense, but we'll come back to that in a bit. Finally, we have sporulation. How can we translate this? We can say spore formation, but spore is still a bit of a problem for us. We can define spore, but now things are getting a little bit wordy in our title, and it's important to keep in mind what is the main point when we're talking about sporulation. This is something that is important for Clostridium difficile, and it's essential for disease transmission. So keeping this in mind, let's take a step back and look at what we've done so far so we can look at the context of these things. Clostridium difficile is now put into context, and high throughput analysis is now translated as rigorous, but we're still struggling with essential genes and spore formation. Here, the thing to keep in mind is what is the important piece of information that we need to impart to our audience. Essential genes and sporulation are both critical to the survival of Clostridium difficile and to disease transmission. Here's the final translation of our title, Rigorous Analysis of the Genes Critical to Disease-Causing C. difficile's Survival. Now that you've had a chance to identify your goals and think about the words that you're going to use, next it's time to think about putting them together to build your message. Here, you want to take how you would normally lay out a science talk or a research paper and flip it. You want to start with a key finding or result. What is the main point that you want your audience to know? And follow that with why they should care. Here, you want to tie it into something that the audience values, again, thinking from their perspective. Following that is where you want to give them the foundational material or supporting evidence so that they know why what you're saying is true is actually true. These are the three main points. For activity three, we want you to choose one of the research articles for which we've provided you abstracts. Click on the link in the description below. First, we want you to compose a Facebook post, three to five sentences. After that, compose a tweet. Remember, you only have 140 characters to work with. What you want to do is filter out the details that are not essential for your audience and instead showcase what is so incredible about this work. Now is a good time to pause your video. Here are the tweets we came up with. For a bacterial community morphogenesis paper, we came up with Mighty Morphine Power, Electrical Charges Linked to the Design of Bacterial Community 3D Shapes. For our intercontinental dispersal paper, we came up with No Passport, No Problem, How Microbes Fly Across the Globe and Where They Go. Lastly, for our vancomycin resistance paper, we came up with Researchers Discover New Bacterial Allies in the Fight Against Antibiotic Resistance. So remember, Think about your goals, think about your audiences, and refer to the best practices when crafting your message. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you on social media.